this is Whitney Nasley from WhitneyNasley.com. I shared with you some tips about business cards the other night and I feel like I missed all of my cues so I'm going to do it again. Abby Lavi, would you like to say something on camera? Apparently not. Okay. So, these are my business cards. Whitney buys houses and my phone number. The real estate commission requires that I have my name and my phone number on everything that I give out all the time. So that's why you see it there. The back side, because I have stuff on the back of my business card because that's prime real estate to put good stuff there, that's my auction card. And since I'm gonna do more auctions in 16 than I did in 15, I'm gonna switch next time I order these. See, that's what you gotta understand about business cards is that I don't order thousands and thousands and thousands of cards at one time because I like to change my cards. Like every three or four months I change something. I change an email address, I change a website, I change something on my cards. So also, inside my cards open. And I put all this information on the inside of my cards, okay? It's incredible what can happen in a little card. But let's say you aren't in real estate, you're not buying houses yet, you've got other things that you are advertising for, I still say you need something on the front and back side of your card, okay? Um, this card right here, and I have a PowerPoint slide that goes along with these so you can see all of them. This card is so plain, and there is nothing on the back of it. So this is Gray Hairs Garage in Knoxville, Tennessee. And that's great, except I know this guy. He's one of my dad's buddies, and he works on old cars. He should have a picture of old cars on here or something that tells everybody that he is an expert on old cars. I don't care if you sell insurance. Put something on there that says you sell insurance. If the name of your company is something very far-fetched and you, you know, sat around with a bunch of your friends and came up with this great name or something and it doesn't just get short and straight to the point, you need to make sure something on your business cards is short and straight to the point. Because business cards are little miniature two by three resumes that you hand out all the time, all day long at different networking events. You hand them out in church, you hand them out at Oh, Charlie's, you hand them out at Sam's. Everywhere you are, you should be constantly handing these things out. And Abby Labby wants out. Hold on just a second. Come on. Okay, y'all remember in Legally Blonde, and Elle handed her resume to a professor trying to get that internship, right? What did she do with that? She didn't just hand him a white piece of paper and say, yeah, I'm Elle Woods, I'm pretty fantastic, you need to hire me. She printed it on pink paper, and that blew his mind because it was pink, but it stood out. He remembered it. It was pink. She also sprayed it with perfume. So she hit three of the five senses without even trying, right? He could touch it, it was a resume, but they all felt the same. But it looked different because it was pink. Nobody else printed on pink paper. Somebody else could have printed on blue paper, but they weren't thinking like that, okay? And it hit his senses. It hit his smell sense, too. He could remember that it smelled good. So naturally, if the paper smells good, she smells good, and you want to work with someone that smells good, right? It's the same with your business card. If you own a bakery, you need to go to Bath & Body Works and buy something that smells like cookies and spray all of your cards so they smell like cookies. So when you hand them out, people remember that you have delicious smelling cards. Your food is delicious. They will call you when they're ready to order cookies for their party, okay? Make your cards memorable. Just like you're memorable, make your cards memorable. All right, now I have a checklist and one of the things on my checklist that I want you to make sure you do um, when you are making these cards. I want you to be able, I want them to be legible, okay? And this card right here, and it's again on the slideshow because it's backwards on here. This is a good card. They buy houses, but they put a lot of information on here and nothing on the back. 
if I had made this card, even if it didn't open up and give all sorts of more goodies inside, I would have put the core information on one side, so Whitney Nicely, I buy houses, my phone number, my email address, my website, whatever I wanted here, and then on the back I would have said I'm looking for houses that are like this or I can buy it fast or whatever your tagline is, you put that on the back. Make sure when you are making these cards also that you put whatever information on here that you want people to use. So if you don't ever want your phone to ring, Hand out cards with your email address on it. They will email you. If you don't want people to ever contact you at all, put your website on here, put your blog on here. Whatever way you want people to contact you, that's what should be on the business card. If you are really techie, let's say that you are running online companies and you don't want to hand out a card because you're really techie, I would strongly urge you to consider getting some sort of card because one of the check marks on my checklist for business cards says is it legible meaning can you and I read it but I'm 31 I have pretty good eyesight but let's pretend that I have bad eyesight or I'm 80 years old can I still read your card is it still legible I don't know and so you're techie and you want to be really techie and cool and you're going to get a card because some chick told you you needed a card. All right, fine, get a card. But when you get the card and you want it to be techie and you put this QR code on there, make sure the rest of the world is friendly with QR codes. Because you're techie and you like QR codes and all your buddies do and whatever, Talking to the layperson, they may not do that. And if that's the only way that they have to get in contact with you, they may never get in contact with you. You may be losing more business than if you just didn't even have a card to start with. So these people do a lot of really cool computer stuff. This card is way too jumbled up. And the only way to contact them is to scan the QR code. I would call that a bad card. Okay, so you can make sure it's legible for normal people, for 80 year old people, but also make sure it's legible for a third grader. I took my, my stepsons to Ross the other day, the department store, and my third grade stepson said, where are we, what's this place called? I told him it was Ross, and he said, well the tags say 12 OSS, and it's because he's in the third grade and he overanalyzes everything, right? But that brings up a good point. If you are talking to somebody and maybe English isn't their first language, then you still want to make sure that they can understand your card. And Ross clearly says Ross. But if you look at it really close and overanalyze it, it does look like it says 1-2-O-S-S. -S. We know it's Ross, though. Just double check your cards, okay? And this checklist I keep talking about looks like this. I printed it out just on an 8 by 10 um, Make sure any other thing else that you need, I think it's all on here. Put your logo on. If you don't have a logo, don't worry about it. Don't put it on there. Um, if you are under some sort of regulatory body, like I am under the Real Estate Commission, so I have to have certain things on my card. I have a girlfriend who sells mortgage, or she's a mortgage broker, and she has to have a certain number on her cards. As an auctioneer, I have to have a firm number, my license number, everything on my cards. So don't overlook that also when you're making up business cards to get started. Uh, you can have a picture on there if you want to. My friend Gabe made these cards and it has his picture on it. It's a very good picture. Um, that's okay. A lot of realtors have these, but if you're going to use a picture, make sure it's not a glamour shot from like 10 or 15 years ago. Okay, make sure it actually looks like you. And if you are a cute little jolly Santa, maybe you want to put that picture on there. But if you're just a scraggly old man, maybe you want to skip the picture. If you're a beautiful supermodel, maybe you want your picture on there. If you're not, maybe you just skip the picture part. It also costs a lot to put the pictures on there. Um, people talk about throw cards, and this is an example of a throw card. It looks like a bunch of $100 bills stacked up. And I have an example here that actually feels like $100 bills stacked up, but it's not. When you open it up, they're not. 
and a lot of print shops will hesitate to print these for you because they're afraid they're going to run into some violation and get sued, but there are rules, actually laws, that say what size you can have these. And I have, let's see, three different versions of this card from three different people. So there's clearly a shop out there that will do this for you. And then on the inside, I don't like these because when you see it, it looks like $100, yeah, that's fine. And then you open it and yeah, that's good. But all the information is too squishy on there. For me see it, it's too squishy it doesn't ever pop out at you um, the reason I like my cards is when I originally got my cards here let's see okay this is my first card that I got and it says we buy houses cash there's a bunch of words on the back and the way I had them folded people had a really hard time opening them up and I had all my good information contact me inside which turned out to be a huge problem because I would hand this to regular people or dirty old men probably and they'd be like, but your phone number's not on here. How do I contact you? And I'd be like, oh, we have to open it up. It was super annoying. So the next time I had them printed, they have little tabs. So it's easy and obvious that I want you to open them up. Okay? These are much better. But I've gone through several different versions. This is one of my first cards had all of our logos, all of our information. Um, I actually have mine and my brother's information on this because he was bad about carrying cards and I was constantly writing his information on my card and handing it out. So I just had some cards printed up with both of our information. This was our uh, family company side, Walker's Tennessee Truck and Nicely's. And on the back I had our real estate information when we were working for a different company. So, there's lots of tips, suggestions on business cards, but the most important thing I want you to realize and take away is that these are little bitty resumes that you are handing out by the dozens. Hand out two or three cards at a time. They do not do you any good in a drawer in your office back in wherever, okay? I keep stacks of these things in every purse because every lady says, oh, I changed purses and I forgot my cards. No, put a stack in every purse. Put a stack in your wallet. Put a stack in your car. Put a stack in your husband's car. Put a stack in your wife's car. Put stacks of these things. I mean, put them everywhere. As soon as I get a box, and I order them by 500 at a time because I like to change them, I'll burn through putting, you know, 50 here, 50 there, 50 here, 50 there, 50. I just put 50 everywhere I am so that I am never without one of my most current cards. When you start making cards and changing them, then you start to feel like you rebrand yourself every time. So you want to make sure that you have the right card at the right place for the right person. So get some cards printed. You can use Vistaprint if you want to. Uh, I would suggest go ahead and hitting that limit to where they don't print Vista print on the bottom. Um, call a local print shop. Get some cards made up. Have fun. Hand them out two or three at a time. Um, a good rule of thumb is to hand three out to one person. So they get one, their wife, spouse, husband gets one, and they have one to hand out. That's all I got. Whitney Nicely at WhitneyNicely.com. If you have any questions, email me, info at WhitneyNicely.com. I'm pretty easy to find on social media. It's Whitney Nicely most places, and if it's not that, it's Whitney Buys Houses. So find me, friend me, like me, whatever. I will have more webinars coming up in 2016. And it was a wonderful day to talk to you. Merry Christmas. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.